Hello and welcome to another Common Core Algebra 2 video by eMath Instruction. My name is Kirk Weiler and today we're going to be doing Unit 1 Lesson 2 Solving Linear Equations. Now you've been solving linear equations probably since like 6th or 7th grade. So this is a topic that's been around for quite some time and yet no matter how far you go in math, whether or not you become an engineer or somebody who uses a lot of math, all the way into college you're going to be solving linear equations constantly. So it's an important skill to be fluent with. It's an important skill to understand why it works, how it works, etc. So this lesson is going to review all of that. Let's jump right into the first exercise. All right, well in this first exercise we've got four different linear equations and I guess in a certain sense I've arranged them so that they get more difficult as you go on. Certainly D is the most complicated one of all. What I'd like you to do right now is kind of test to see how ready you are to solve linear equations by pausing the video now and working through all four of these. It shouldn't take you any more than 10 minutes, so go ahead and pause the video and then we'll go through each problem one by one. All right, let's go through the problems. Now, in problem letter A, really, I want to look at this as just undoing what's been done. I've got 3 times x plus 5 equals 26, so I'm going to subtract 5 from each side to leave me with 3x is equal to 21. I'm going to divide both sides by 3, and I'm going to be left with x equals 7. All right, that is about as basic of a linear equation as you can get. Letter B, on the other hand, has variables on both sides, and you've got some choice here. We could move all the variables to one side and all the non-variables to the other, or we could you know, do it in the opposite order. I'm going to actually add this 7 to both sides to get rid of it. So I'll have 8x is equal to 4x. Here's where we have to be careful. Negative 5 plus 7 is a positive 2. Now I'm going to move this 4x to both sides by doing this. Now I'm not giving you really any kind of justification here. What I'm doing right here is just going through the basic manipulations that you've seen year after year. Now we have to be a little careful here. 2 divided by 4 isn't 2, right? It simplifies down to x equals 1 half. Now one could argue that letter C is actually easier than letter B because again it just has got the um, the single x on the left hand side. But it does have a little division involved and some addition up here. Now, what we need to do, though, is we need to begin the problem by multiplying by 2 on both sides. We can't subtract 8. But by multiplying by 2 on both sides, we get rid of that division by 2, and we end up having x plus 8 is equal to negative 12. We can then get rid of the 8 by subtracting 8 from both sides. Be careful here. Negative 12 plus negative 8 will be x equals negative 20. All right, finally, letter D has got a lot going on because it's got the distributive property twice. It's got variables on both sides. This is about as beastly of a linear equation as you can get. So I'm going to begin by distributing the 6 through the parentheses, 6x plus 24. I'm then going to distribute a negative 2 through the parentheses, giving me negative 2x. And watch out, a negative times a negative is a positive. All right. Now, I'm going to use a little bit of rearranging, and I'm going to flip-flop that 24 and that negative 2x. Some of you, of course, will do this without writing down this line, and that's okay. You know, you get to a certain point in math, and you want to be able to do a lot of the manipulation. I'm going to combine like terms here. 6x minus 2x is 4x. 24 plus 2 is 26. On this side, we'll have 2x plus 20. And now we're really back to a situation like in letter B. Um, I can certainly subtract a 26 from both sides, giving me 4x is equal to 2x. Again, be careful, 20 minus 26 is negative 6. Subtract a 2x from both sides, and we'll get 2x is equal to negative 6. We're just about out of room here. Divide both sides by 2. I don't know what that little stray mark is. And we'll get x equals negative 3. All right. That was a long one. But again, if you can do a problem like letter D, if you got negative 3 there, awesome. It means that you, you're up to speed on your linear equation solving. Pause the video now and write down anything you need to. All right, I'm clearing out this text. Moving on to the next problem. Now, solving linear equations has to be almost automatic for you at this point. 
<clears throat> but it's still good to understand what justifies each thing we did, especially in a problem like the one that we just had in one letter D where there's a lot going on. Now, in the last lesson, we reviewed the commutative, associative, and distributive properties of numbers. But there's also properties of equality, known as the additive and multiplicative properties of equality. And the properties of equality basically say, look, you can add or subtract a number from both sides of an equation. You can multiply or divide by a number on both sides of the equation. As long as you don't divide by zero, you know, then, then you're fine. Um, those properties, the commutative, associative, distributive, and then the properties of equality, additive and multiplicative, really justify everything that we do with linear equations. So let's take a look at solving this eh, somewhat complicated linear equation and justify each step. So let's take a look here. We've got 2 times x plus 7 plus 4x equals 44, and we make that into 2x plus 14 plus 4x equals 44. Well, that is the distributive property, right? We have multiplied that 2 through the parentheses. I'm not sure why I put down property each time. It always is there. But it's the distributive property. We have distributed the 2 through the parentheses. Now, if you look at this next step, what I've done is I've taken 14 plus 4x and I've made it into 4x plus 14. That is the commutative property, right? The property that allows us to say, hey, 14 plus 4x is the same as 4x plus 14. Why not? Now, the next one, this tends to be the trickiest one. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do a little bit of erasing here so that you can see it a little bit better. Um, here, I'm going to take 2x plus 4x, and I'm going to write it as x times 2 plus 4. That is, again, our friend, the distributive property. A lot of students have a hard time seeing that because it's sort of the distributive property run backwards. All right. Now, obviously, we just combine the 2 and the 4 and get 6. In the next line, though, once we start with 6x plus 14 equals 44, I've subtracted 14 from both sides. Strangely enough, that would be called the additive property of equality, the additive property. Really, in a sense, what we're saying is that we're adding a negative 14 to both sides of this, and then, of course, 44 minus 14 is 30. Our final step comes when we divide both sides of this equation by 6. That is the multiplicative property. You might say, hey, you didn't multiply there, you divided. Um, but every multiplication problem, every division problem can be phrased the other way. So dividing by 6 is the same as multiplying by 1 sixth. So we still call it the multiplicative property. Otherwise, we'd have to have an additive property, a subtractive property, a multiplicative property, a division property, etc., etc. It's wordy as is. We don't need to bring any more in. All right? So pause the video now and write down anything you need to. All right, let's clear it out and move on. Exercise 3 says, try to solve the following equation. State whether the equation is an identity or inconsistent. Explain. Well, there's many different types of equations. Two that are really rather odd are what are known as identities and ones that are inconsistent. An identity is an equation that is always true. Oh boy. Always true. So all values of x solve it. All values of x solve. That's Some people might take a little bit of an issue with that, but that's basically the idea. Every value of x would solve it. An inconsistent equation is one where no value of x will solve it. No value of x solves it. All right. Now, these are kind of annoying equations, and they don't come up a lot, but they come up enough that you want to be aware of them and aware of how to interpret strange things that happen when you solve an equation. So watch. Let's play around with this equation. Let's, um, let's distribute the negative 2. Let's use the distributive property. Again, let's be very careful because negative 2 times negative 4 is negative 8. Let's distribute this 3x as well. You know, I mean, at this point, you kind of are just moving along going, well, I don't see anything odd here. Now we could combine some like terms. 6x minus 2x is 4x minus 8. 
Here I might have to rearrange these using the commutative property, but ultimately I'd have 3x plus x, which would be 4x, and 6 minus 5, which would be positive 1. Now take a look at this for a moment before we move on, because I don't really want to go any further. I want to understand structure here. Basically what this says is I'm looking for some number, you know, x is some number, that when I take 4 times that number and subtract 8, I get the same thing as when I take 4 times that number and add 1. Well, there are no numbers. There are no numbers. There are no numbers for which this is possible. Right? I mean, you cannot take 4 times the number, subtract 8, and get the same thing as taking 4 times the number and adding 1. So this is an inconsistent equation, no solutions. Now, some students like to keep going a little bit, so let me take it just one step further. Again, I think you should be able to look at it right now and go, that's inconsistent. Some students will choose to subtract a 4x from both sides. That's fine. That'll leave you with negative 8 is equal to 1. Well, I think that we can all agree that negative 8 is never equal to 1. There is no value of x that will ever make negative 8 equal to 1. And therefore, this is an inconsistent equation. An inconsistent equation, not equations. There's really only one there. It's an inconsistent equation. All right? So now, let's play around a little bit with an identity. Pause the video now and write down anything you need to. Okay, here we go. All right, exercise number four. An identity is an equation that is true for all values of the substitution variable. In other words, x. Oh, let's go back to blue. Trying to solve them can lead to confusing situations. Consider the equation 2x minus 6 plus x minus 1 whew, equals 3 times x minus 3 plus 2. Letter A says, test the values of x equals 5 and x equals 3 in this equation. Show that they're both solutions. Well, let's, let's try one together and then have you work on the other one by yourself. Let's, let's show that x equals 5 is a solution. Now, we didn't really talk about this because it goes to the heart of solution solving, but what it means for a value of x to be a solution of the equation is that it will make the equation true. It's like, it's like we're not lying, right? So when I put 5 in for x everywhere, the left-hand side has to be equal to the right-hand side. Well, we have to be careful with our order of operations here. Make sure we're, we're doing them correctly, right? But if I just work through nice and slow, 10 minus 6 is 4, plus 5 minus 1. Let's do that multiplication. 6 plus 2, we have 4 plus 5, which is 9. 9 minus 1 is 8. And 8 equals 8. So that's that's true equation when I put x equals 5 in. So that's got to be a solution. What I'd like you to do is pause the video and take about a minute, plug x equals 3 in, and show that it is also a solution. All right, well, let's do it. Let's go with x equals 3. So again, just like before, everywhere there's an x, I'm now going to replace it with a 3. All right? Simple enough. All right, again, just like before, I want to be careful with my order of operations. All right. Ooh, 3 minus 3 is 0. Nice. Here, 6 minus 6 will be 0, plus 3 minus 1. 3 times 0 is 0. That zero doesn't really matter. That zero doesn't really matter. Three minus one is two. Two is equal to two. Also a solution. Now that's a bit weird because linear equations, linear equations, one where there's x just to the first, right, tend to only have one solution. They don't have two solutions. They don't tend to, right? So letter B says attempt to solve the equation until you're sure it's an identity. All right, so now let's, let's try to see what's going on here by actually solving this equation. All right, so again, it's kind of like if a teacher just slapped this in front of you and said, hey, solve it, right? What would you do? Well, 
I might like rearrange this side a little bit if I needed to, you know, use the commutative property there. I'd probably use the distributive property right away on this side. Maybe I'd clean this up a little bit. I'd get 3x and then negative 6, negative 1 is negative 7. Over here, we would have negative 9 plus 2. That's also negative 7. And then I think I would stop. Because this really shows it's an identity. Look, I mean, if I'm trying to find all the numbers where that make 3x minus 7 equal to 3x minus 7, it's going to be everything, right? I mean, that's basically just saying, look, take a number and do exactly the same thing to it on both sides. You know, you're going to have equality. So that there's how we know it's an identity. <coughs> oh, excuse me. I hope it's okay. I'm not going to go back and edit out that sneeze. It's been a long winter. So this will always happen. Always happen. Wow, that, apparently my Y's don't always happen. But this always happens, so it's an identity. Always, actually, how about always true? Always true, so it's an identity. All right. So we've got identities that will always give you something like 5x plus 1 equals 5x plus 1, or 7x minus 2 equals 7x minus 2. And then you've got these inconsistent equations where the things can't ever be true because negative 8 isn't equal to 1 or something like that. Anyhow, we're going to get a nice workout with this in the next exercise, so pause the video now and write down anything you need to. All right, let's clear it out. Okay, exercise 5. Which of the following equations are identities, which are inconsistent, and which are neither? All right. Well, the best way to figure this out is to start to solve the equation, just like you always would, and then see exactly what happens, right? If, if, if you get a solution that's just normal, well, then it's neither. But if something funny comes along, then you have to be able to figure it out. So let's play around with letter A. Let's do this one together and then have you work on other ones maybe on your own. So in letter A, I'm going to just start solving this. I'll distribute the negative 2. I'll distribute the 5, all right? I'll combine some like terms. And look at that. 6x minus 6 equals 6x minus 5. I mean, if you had to take it one farther step, you could subtract a 6x from both sides, giving you negative 6 equals 5. Well, that, that's never true. That's never true. So this is simply an inconsistent equation. No solutions. There's no solutions. No value of x will ever make that true. All right, what I'd like you to do is pause the video. These look pretty darn confusing, these equations. And I want you to try to solve each one of them until either you have a solution or you can conclude that it's inconsistent or it's an identity. Pause the video now and take some time. All right, let's go through it. Letter B. Wow, so many places that you could start on letter B. So many different places. You could use the distributive property right here, right? And you'd get 4x divided by 2, which would be 2x. Don't forget 2 divided by 2, that would be 1. Right? So you have to do that distributive property on the division. But then I'm going to get 2x plus 9 equals 2x plus 9. Well, that's always true. Always true. Right? doesn't matter what value of x you put in there. That's going to always be true. So this is an identity. Now, again, just to be very clear, what that means is that we have an infinite number of solutions. Every value of x will solve that equation. All right, let's take a look at letter C. Find out what you had there. Again, you know, when you first take a look at these, ooh, look at this, let's distribute a negative 1. Negative x plus 7. Not something that we've done for a little while. Again, let's play around with it. 2x minus x is x plus 15. 4x minus 6. Hey, notice at this point, you know, I mean, it feels like I'm just solving a kind of a normal equation. I'm going to 
do some shortcutting here right now because we're talking about Algebra 2 students. Well, so x equals 7. So this is neither, right? It's neither inconsistent nor an identity because there's only one value of x that solves the equation. x equals 7. It's just a normal equation. Oof, let's do this last one. 2x plus 1. Uh-oh. I don't want an equal sign there. That's a little weird. 2x plus 1. Let's use the distributive property plus 2x minus 2. Let's use the distributive property again. 4x minus 1, right? i got to divide the 16 by 4, the 4 by the 4. Let's see. 2x and 2x is 4x. 1 minus 2 is negative 1. 4x minus 1 equals 4x minus 1. This is, again, an identity. Always true. Always true. Oh, there's a lot of writing on that board, which means my head is really tiny right now. Strange for me. So pause the video now, write down anything you need to, and then we're going to move on. Okay, clearing it out. Okay, so today we reviewed a very, very important skill how we solve linear equations. Even though you've been doing it for years and years in seventh grade math, eighth grade math, common core algebra one, common core geometry, and now back in common core algebra two, this is an essential skill. You've absolutely got to have it. We also looked at some weird linear equations, ones that were inconsistent, had no solutions, and ones that were identities. They had an infinite number of solutions. Spotting these, however rare they might be, is also pretty important in math. All right. Well, thank you for joining me for another Common Core Algebra 2 lesson from eMath Instruction. My name is Kirk Weiler, and until next time, keep thinking and keep solving problems. <laughs>